with that down, <laughs> let's move on to our next topic here, shall we, Paris? What we got up next? Yeah. So, what could end up being the biggest film of 2024? Deadpool and Wolverine is finally opening in theaters next week. It's here. Um. So while the excitement is high, many fans have expressed some concern that the film will just be all jokes and blood without the heart that the first two Deadpool movies delivered. So while well, Kevin Feige just addressed that expressing that he thinks Deadpool 3 may be the most wholesome and heartfelt rated R movie ever. <laughs> so, John, what do you think of Feige's comments? I think if I had to put a word to Kevin Feige's comments, it's timely. Timely. Because, because you're right. I mean, I have fielded so many questions and comments from people about, okay, yeah... The Deadpool trailers are funny, but if this is just yuck, yuck, laugh, laugh, yeah. then, you know, it's just going to be another throwaway kind of movie, which number one, I don't think that's true. If this movie made, made us laugh from start to finish and had no other substance, like had no other substance, but we as an audience laughed our guts out from start to finish, then the movie works. It just does. But the great thing about the Deadpool movies, look, you go back to the first Deadpool movie specifically, that is... That movie's a romantic comedy disguised as a comic book action film. Because really, the, because that sh movie had so much heart. It had so much heart. So much character, development, A, B, and C narrative storylines going on. And then, yes, the flashy, super R-rated stuff with the violence and the swearing and the pegging and everything else that was going on there. It all worked. But at its heart was heart, right? And Deadpool 2 did that as well. Maybe not quite as well as the first one, but the second one did it as well. So a lot of people, the one hesitation we've heard from a lot of people is, well, yeah, but this is just going to be all flash and nothing else. Because that's all they've been showing us in the trailers. But Kevin Feige decided this was a good time to come out and kind of address that when he said this. Hugh and Ryan have talked about this, and I think people can tell from the trailer and from the press tour, tour so far, yes, it's R-rated. Yes, there's some language and blood. Looks like there's more than some. Yes, there's some language and blood. But the film is incredibly emotional. I keep calling it the most wholesome R-rated film that anybody can ever see. <laughs> it really is a celebration of friendship and family and found family. I don't want to overdo it. Well, you already kind of crossed that line, yeah. Kevin. I don't want to overdo it. But for all the R-rated raunchiness that gets attention, when people see the movie... It's going to be about how heartfelt it is. In my opinion, much more than the first two Deadpool films. That's what I'm really excited about. Once people get past the F words and the R rating to see just how sweet it is. All right. Now, I do want to point out, because it should be mentioned, that Kevin Feige is the executive producer of this movie. He's also the head of the studio putting it out. So he's not going to come out and say, well, you know, we tried to make it as good as the first Deadpool film, and well, well what are you going to do? We tried. No, no, he's going to come out and talk big about it. But what he's saying here is really reflective of what we've been hearing both Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds talk about. And I think one of the reasons when Sean Levy, the director of the film, got on stage at CinemaCon and told all of us before they showed us the nine minutes of footage, he said, look, we had to work really hard just a fine nine minutes we could show you because there is so many surprises. There's so much to this film that we don't want to show anybody. And one of the things he referenced to was the fact that, look, they could have gone into production the moment they said they wanted a Deadpool 3, right? Because how hard and how long does it take to write a lot of, you know, pegging jokes and F-bombs and cutting people's heads off? A high school student can put that together, right? They waited, they talked about, for years to find the right heart, to find the story, to find why Deadpool would matter, a Deadpool 3 would matter. And it reminds me a lot of when Ryan Reynolds, when the first Deadpool movie was coming out, and I'm not getting his wording exactly, uh, so I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but when Ryan Reynolds was talking about the first Deadpool movie, and he's saying, it can't just be another comic book film, Right? You've got to make a good film. You can't just make a comic book film. You have to make a good film, which means having the right story, the right characters, you know, the right progress, the right arc for all of them, 
the evolution of the characters, the evolution. You got to have all those things. You got to make a good movie first, then make it a good comic book movie. So I've never really doubted that Ryan and uh, w w the writers, uh, Rhett Reese and uh, Werner, I think it is, that the writers and Ryan Reynolds would probably take that approach. So for me, understanding with the large caveat that this is, of course, the head of the studio that's putting the movie out, but still, for Kevin Feige to come out and make these comments about it, directly addressing, look, we wanted this thing to have heart, we wanted it to have emotion, we wanted it people to walk out feeling good. And then you add that to the outrageousness of Deadpool? Look, if they actually manage to do that, and that's a big if, admittedly, we'll know in eight days. But if they've actually managed to do that and really combine those elements that make a great film with those elements we've already seen in the trailer that make a great comic book film, sky's the limit for this movie. Like, sky is the absolute limit for this movie. Now, I also want to remind everybody that Kevin Feige said that he thought Eternals was the best movie that Marvel had ever made. I liked Eternals. It was not the best movie Marvel had ever made. I like that movie, but it was not the best movie Marvel ever made. Still, we'll see what uh, what happens from here. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Game Time. My wife Ann and I love going to events, whether they're comedy shows, concerts, an LA Lakers game. I mean, just the other night we went to go see Ronnie Chang and it was awesome. We love having these new experiences and new memories. And our sponsor Game Time makes getting tickets for concerts and events faster and easier, even if you don't buy tickets right away. Because prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to the show start time. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game time takes the guesswork out of buying event tickets. I couldn't believe how easy and most importantly, intuitively, the entire app works. Finding the event I was looking for couldn't have been easier. The way it lays out the map of the venue, letting you know exactly where the seats are that you're looking for and how easy the process was to choose and buy those tickets. So don't worry if you think you're too late to get tickets to that big event you and your friend want to go to. They have last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever. So guys, take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CAMPIA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CAMPIA, C-A-M-P-E-A, -E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Guys, question is for you. What do you think about Kevin Feige's comments? I mean, I, the reason I think they're timely is because a lot of people are raising these questions. Okay, it's going to have the flash and bang, but will it have, you know, the actual guts to it? He's saying it does. Do you buy it? We're eight days away. What are your expectations for this film? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.